Hey guys, welcome to lesson five of Unit. We're going to be talking about division of polynomials. So before you can understand division of polynomials, we have to go way back to grade school and think about how you do long division. So let's pretend like we have um, this problem. Um, 346 divided by 3. So we'd set it up like this and we'd say, okay, well, how many times does 3 go into 3? Well, it goes into the one time and then 1 times 3 is 3 and then you're going to subtract it. And I'm like stressing that because this is kind of a big deal. We get into the polynomials and um, people kind of forget that. And so that becomes 0 Then we drop down the next term. So how many times does 3 go into 4? Once. 1 times 3 is 3, and so I'm left with 1. And then again, we're going to drop this. So now I have 16. So how many times does 3 go into 16? 5. 5 times 3 is 15. We have 1 left over. Okay, so um, your teacher probably taught you to, um, first of all, just do like remainder 1. And then you got a little bit bigger, and they're like, no, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to turn it into a fraction. And so the way you turn it into a fraction is you take your remainder and you put it over this number. So my answer is 115 and one third. And so that's how we're going to treat um, these polynomials. So um, it's not always like that. So we're going to start off pretty easy. So if I took this and I divided it through by x, um, I'm going to look at it as each term divided by x. So it's going to look like this. And so then I could simplify it. So it would become 12x squared plus 5x plus 6 plus 9 over x. And we can kind of simplify it a little bit. Okay, um, same thing with this over here, same concept. So I'm going to take 3x divided by everything, each term. So that's going to be 4x squared and then plus 5x over 3 plus 2 plus, oops, plus 3 over x. So it looks like that. Okay, so now we're going to get into more of these. And um, we have this going on. And so what we're going to do is we are going to start off just like we did up here. So we're going to put the first number underneath um, the division sign and then the three on the outside. So it's going to look like this. So just like I did last time up here, I'm going to start with the very first piece of it, and I'm going to say, how many times can I get this number to go into this piece? And so, um, same thing, I'm going to start with this. And I know that there's two terms, but we're going to focus on this guy, and then this guy is just going to be our follower. So how many times does x squared go into 4x to the fourth? Well, it goes into it 4x squared times. So the reason I'm saying that is because if I multiply those two together, I get 4x to the 4th, and then I'm going to multiply that as well. Um, 4x squared times 1 is 4x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and find the x squared and pair it up. So it looks like that. Okay, so my next step is up here. Remember what I said? We're going to subtract what we got. So I'm going to subtract these two, and I get 5x to the third minus 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. And I'm going to repeat that same process. So I have x squared, and I have 5x to the third. So I'm missing a 5 and an x. So when I multiply 5x times x squared, I get 5x to the third, and then plus 5x when I multiply it times the 1. So I'm going to put that down here. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to subtract my answer, and I get negative 2x squared 
plus 2x plus 3. And I'm just going to keep doing it till I can't do it anymore. So this is going to be negative 2. And I'm going to subtract it. So remember, we're subtracting. We're changing the signs always. So I have 2x plus 5 for my final answer. And so I know I'm done because I can't make x squared go into 2x. So I'm done. So this is going to be my remainder. So remember, we're not going to just write our 2x plus 5. We're going to turn this into a fraction. So I'm going to say plus, always plus, and then you're going to do 2x plus 5, that's your remainder, over what was being divided. Like that. Or what was... Um, what you were dividing by, I guess I should say. So that is my final answer. Okay, so go ahead and do the same thing with this problem. See if you can do it. Okay, so I showed all my steps. Um, just don't forget to subtract. And then also down here, like you know you're done when like I got down to this and I can't have X go into 427. So I knew that that was my remainder. Okay, so I know these are really yucky. Um, so I'm gonna teach you another way to do this. And it's very, very specific. It has to be when it's in this form. So for example, if you have like an x squared, this isn't going to work. So you need a like a linear binomial for this to work. And it's called synthetic division. And it's really cool. It's a process that at first you're probably not going to like, but it's so much faster than doing this. And you were taught it in algebra two, so hopefully it'll kind of ring a bell. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to set this equal to zero and solve for x. So if we did that, x is going to equal four. And that's going to go in a box. Okay, I'm going to grab the coefficients from each one of these. And so it needs to go down. So I have 3, 2, I'm missing x to the first. So that's going to be a 0, um, a coefficient of 0, and then 11. So let me show you how this looks. 7, negative 2, 0, 11. And then I'm going to leave some space and I'm going to draw a line. So the rule is, once you get that, um, you are going to drop this first number, and all numbers down here, you're going to multiply to the number in the box. So the answer is 28, and so I'm going to put 28 right here. And then from here, I'm going to combine these, so just add them together, and I get 26. And then the same thing. So 26 times 4 is 104. Add them together. Now multiply again. 104 times 4 is 416. Add them together. So these numbers should start looking familiar up here. 726, 104, 427. 7, 26, 104, 427. So we're going to work from right to left. So we're going to work backwards. And think about like an RC car. So it's going to go R, C, and we're just going to keep adding like um, X to the certain power until we run out of numbers. So like if we had another number, we'd say like X cubed, X to the fourth. So we're just going to keep going until we run out of numbers. Okay, and so these now become the coefficients of my answer. And so R stands for remainder, C stands for constant. But I always think about it like RC, right to left. Okay, so then my answer is 7x squared plus 26x plus 104 plus, and then do what we did before, so you're going to put it um, over the x minus 4. Okay, so that's going to take a lot of practice, so make sure that um, maybe pause right now and work on your homework for that section, and um, then maybe come back. And the last thing we're going to talk about is remainder theorem. And so what we're going to ask ourselves is if x plus 1, and remember like this is what I would put in the box, is x plus 1 a factor of 
this. And so that's, that's one thing that you need to kind of decode. So this would be put in the box. So is x plus 1 a factor? That's what this, all of that is saying. And so the way we find that, we're going to get to this in a second. So I'm holding off on that on purpose. Um, so the way that we find this is think about if I had, let's go back to um, the normal numbers. So let's go back to this one. And I'm going to take all this craziness away. So if I had um, 346 divided by 3, and I ask you, is 3 a factor? Then you're going to say, okay, well, let's see, does 3 go evenly into 346? And you're going to say no, because it had a remainder of one third. Okay, so that's how we need to determine whether it's a factor or not, whether or not it has remainder. So let's apply that to synthetic division. So we're going to go down here, and if our remainder is zero, then we can say this is a factor. So if I ask you, is x minus 4 a factor of this, you would say, no way, Jose, because you have a remainder of 427. So it's not a factor. The same concept that we've been dealing with since grade school, it's just our problems look a lot more different. OK, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure this out. So 4, 0, because look, we're missing an x squared here, negative 6. 7. So see if you can just do synthetic division like we've done in the past and um, see if this value is going to be a 0. Okay, so um, this was definitely not 0. So I'm going to say x plus 1 is not a factor of this because it has a remainder. Okay, now I want to go to this piece of it. So what I want you to do is um, we've actually had a problem like this on our last test. So we are going to plug in um, negative 1 to this problem and see what our answer would be. So go ahead and do that. And did you get 9? That should be your answer. Okay, so something else that's special about this number is when you plug in a number that they give you, um, that is your answer to that number. So like P of negative 1 equals 9. So if I plug negative 1 in um, for all my x's, I'm going to get 9. So that's the second piece of that, um, just something to look out for. And that is it, guys.